The Hail Crater controversy stems from these three images available on the ESA's website. When one takes the images and turns down the brightness but increases the contrast, geometric patterns appear on the crater floor. It has been argued that these patterns are JPEG artifacts enhanced by the contrast and brightness adjustments. But the patterns on the floor of Hale appear exactly the same with respect to the topography in all three images. We can perform a quick study of this around a feature I will call the spade. The spade is here outlined in blue. And next to the spade we have the flag with two airplanes flying overhead. Behind the flag we have the anti-aircraft gun shooting at the two planes. Over the anti-aircraft gun we have the dialogue box for the gunner who's screaming something like, GET SOME! And off to the right we have a J for JPEG Artifact. In the next image, the area of the spade is upside down, so we'll flip it 180 degrees, and we can see the flag, the anti-aircraft gun, the dialog box, and the J for JPEG Artifact. And finally, the third photograph the flag, the anti-aircraft gun, the dialogue box, and the J. Since JPEG artifacts cannot appear the same in multiple photographs taken of the same area from different angles, the skeptic's argument must now become one of three-dimensional rendering. In a three-dimensional rendering, all of the relative heights of the surface features are mapped in a colorless plane. A single photograph of the area in question is then applied to this plane. Multiple images can be rendered from different angles of the area in question. This argument requires that a single original photograph be used in all three of the ESA's images in order to explain the consistency of the image artifacts. The game now becomes one of finding the differences as opposed to the similarities in the images of Hale. In this area of the crater floor, the geometric patterns appear very blurred. However, in this photograph, we can see that there is no such blurring. Three-dimensional rendering can cause blurring of the image, but this happens where the topography changes the greatest and not on level terrain. A second difference in the photos is found here. In order to give some context, we will mark the hills surrounding the anomaly. The red hill, the green hill, and the three rocks. Here is another flag, and the area of interest is in the center. This we will call the silo. And in the second image, the area of the anomaly again will be marked with the red hill, the green hill, the three rocks, the flag is seen, and the silo. However, when we reach the third photograph, problems start to occur. The red hill, the green hill, and the blue rocks are all still present and accounted for. The flag is still nicely in place, but the silo is now absent without leave. A third example of how the images differ is found here. This group of rocky outcroppings makes a nice arrow that points to the green ridge line across the valley. The anomaly in question is this dark S-shaped feature. In the west-facing image, we also have the arrow pointing to the green ridge line and the S feature right where it should be. Once again, we have discrepancies when viewing the third image. 
We have the arrow, the green hillside, but the darkened S feature is no longer visible. If we all assume that the ESA is on the up and up, then these three examples prove that the three ESA images cannot be three-dimensional renderings based on the same original photograph. It follows that if the three ESA images cannot be based on the same original photograph, then what the skeptics have called JPEG artifacts cannot be JPEG artifacts. They must be an accurate representation of what is on the ground on Mars.